What's amazing about Wales, there can be so much beautiful scenery and rich history in such a small area. Most of these places are overlooked by tourists and also by us locals as well. So join me and see what we can discover today. Well, hello and welcome. And today you find me on the banks of the River Clydach in Neath, South Wales. And if you're wondering where Mel is, I'm afraid she's working while I go on my jaunts around Wales. So unless you're local, you've probably heard of the name Neath, but I've never stopped here. And on this short stroll, I'm going to show you what you're missing and some beautiful scenery off the beaten tourist path. It's only a short walk, about less than a mile, but during this you'll see some, as you can see, beautiful scenery, as well as some rich history going back over 900 years. Well, the river level's quite low today. We haven't had much rain for a long time. So, anyway, the River Clydach flows down, and not far downstream it joins the River Neath, then it flows into Swansea Bay. And as usual for Wales, there's a lot of places with similar names. So I'll show you exactly where I am on a map. But anyway, this area, if we went back to the early 19th century, it would have been very different. So now we come on to the days of the Industrial Revolution and back in the early 19th century they used the power of that waterform river to drive a water wheel which then was used to power the Neath Abbey Ironworks forge and rolling mill which was situated just over there. That opened in 1825 and that was in operation until the 1870s when it was reutilized as a textile mill and there was a textile mill there until 1974. The river's quite low so I'm going to be able to cross it here and have a closer look at the ruins of the old mill. Is it just me, or is there something sad about derelict industrial sites? They're romantic, but something sad as well. Anyway, that's enough moping around. Let's continue our walk and see what else we can discover. I don't know if you can see it. Just over there, through the trees, that's the rolling mill and forge by the waterfall where we've just come from. But what you don't appreciate when you do this walk, look at it, it's really picturesque, quiet, crystal clear water. Back in the early 19th century, it would have been smoky, noisy, the water would have been polluted, there would have been slag heaps around. Not a pleasant place to live or work. But it is now, so you can come and enjoy. Well, only about 150 yards downriver from the falls, you come across this. I think this is the old tram bridge and weir, dating from the early 19th century. The weir had an integral sluice gate, 
which directed the water down a leat which followed the west bank of the river to the blast furnaces of Neath Abbey Ironworks, the main works. And that's where we're heading now. I have to admit, I've never done this walk before. So whether you're a local or a tourist, it's definitely a must do. It's only short, less than a mile, but it's amazing. There's so much history. It's really interesting as well as being really picturesque. So now I'm going under the viaduct and I'm heading towards Neath Abbey Ironworks. I've now reached Neath Abbey Ironworks, founded in 1792 by two Quaker families, the Foxes and the Prices from Cornwall. As you can see, look at the size of these blast furnaces. They're meant to be two of the best preserved blast furnaces from the time in the world. That one, 20 meters high, 65 feet, and I don't know if you can see, they were built against the cliff face. I can't actually go in because it's fenced off, but let's see if we get a closer look. What is amazing, look. There's no one here. All this history and heritage, as well as beautiful countryside. No one here. Anyway. Let's go and take a look around, see if we can get a bit closer. Not only did they produce iron, which they sold, they helped power the Industrial Revolution. They produced their own steam engines and marine steam engines, and they built their own iron ships and locos. And these workshops were where those steam engines were constructed. The works finally closed in the 1880s. Rain. So from here, I'm going to rejoin the road and take a very short walk down the hill to a site where this place, Neath Abbey Ironworks, gets its name from, Neath Abbey Monastery itself. So let's go. It's only a short walk, about five minutes, from Neath Abbey Ironworks down to Neath Abbey itself. And these are quite impressive ruins. The Abbey was founded in 1129 by Richard de Granville, and he was one of the 12 Knights of Glamorgan. I mentioned those in my video about Coity Castle, and I'll put that link below. By the late 13th century, Neath Abbey had grown to be one of the biggest and wealthiest in Wales. And it's, I don't know if you've seen my video 
on Scare House. Scare House used to be a grange. There used to be estates to support the abbeys and that was owned by Neath Abbey. Well, everything was fine until our good old friend Henry VIII turned up. Initially, they paid him off, but by 1539, the abbey was dissolved and the abbey and its estate was granted to uh, Sir Richard Williams. So anyway, not long after that, in the southeast corner, in the cloisters there, he built a grand mansion. But I think it was used for about a hundred years until it was abandoned due to the encroaching industry in the area. So let's go and take a look at the remnants of the Grand Mansion. This area was the centre for heavy industry and during the Industrial Revolution, even Neath Abbey was used. It became a copper smelting plant. They built furnaces, workshops, workers' houses. And as a result of that activity, the ruins were engulfed by the industrial waste produced. And it wasn't until the 1920s that the site was excavated in the process, they removed nearly 7,000 tonnes of waste. If you're a Doctor Who fan, you may recognise Neath Abbey. It has been used as a location in the series. Well, anyway, if you want to visit, it's worth checking the site CADW, C-A-D-W, they're the Welsh agency in charge of maintaining historic places in Wales. They've got the opening times there. Uh, it is free to get in, so that's good. So, congratulations, you've made it to the end of the video. And if you want to see more about Wales and the area, have a look at the videos below and the ones coming up next. And I'll see you, along with Mel maybe, in one of those. I said bye.